Hi, this is Brandon from Modular Racks. We're going to quickly go over how to assemble a set of our crossbars. For this example, we're going to use the aluminum crossbars, but the steel crossbars are a very similar installation. So your first step is to figure out where the leg goes on the bar, which you can find in your instructions. This one is for a Ford Focus, and this one it wants you to be eight holes from the center of the bar. Those are the equivalent to these here, so that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, you may notice that I have it in the wrong spot here. That is because these are some demo bars and we're just going to be assembling this one to give you an idea of where everything goes. These are the screws that you're looking for to assemble into the bar. They are longer than the depth of the channel here, so when you put them in, and they seat entirely, they'll go down inside these holes, which means even if they're not 100% tight, if they should loosen up, the legs can't slide in here. This is the leg component that you will use, and inside the bar already is the receiving end, sorry, let me get focused there. The receiving end, which is threaded, there's a, a steel piece already slid into the bar. This is the upper leg section, it slides underneath the silver piece, and this will allow you to tension up the bars on your car. So as you tension them up, it will pull in like this. You're going to use this screw that looks like this. This is your tensioning screw. Put the big washer on the end, and then it goes into the middle here, and into the leg. So when you first screw it in, just make sure that it comes out a little bit. And then you're going to put some tamper-proof tin on the top of this. This is the tamper-proof plate that goes in and make sure that you don't have access to the screw heads down below. It slides into the track right here. It goes over top of those screws. It will stand too tall initially, but you press it down and then you thread that in until it holds it in place. No further than that at this point because you want to leave yourself space to attach the roof rack and give it a grab on the roof. So here we are with the screw in place. You can see that this ends of the threads are just protruding through the hole. Everything is flush. Those screws underneath the bar are no longer visible, so anybody who's trying to access those to steal your bars cannot get at them. So our next step is to assemble your leg sections. Notice that this part is for the front, and these instructions are for the rear legs, and that they're slightly different. This is the same for when you're counting those bolt holes from earlier on. So this one, front, goes to the ninth position, whereas the one before that we were looking at was the rear, goes to the eighth position. Here are the leg portions that we need for building the front bar. You can match up the numbers on the bottom of the leg with the numbers right here, L1289-1, L1289-1. Slash one, perfect. And then we have a rubber tab that they're showing pulled through. There's our rubber tab right there. Here's the rubber tab in place on the back of the leg to protect the paint of your vehicle. You pass those rubber pieces up through the holes in the steel leg, and then you just give them a little pull on the end and it pulls everything into place. You can't really press them into place. You have to use those rubber nipples. If your kit uses the standard leg with rubber pad, this is the sandwich that you now want to make. This oval piece under my thumb contains the threaded insert, which will allow you to screw the leg together. Then you use the lower leg section, and you come to the upper leg section, and it goes on the inside, and then the screws pass from the outside of the bar in to that threaded section. And the screws you're looking for are these screws right here. They're black cap screw. Ooh, focus. Anyways, they're a black cap screw and they match the rest of the leg in that area. For the rear leg, we have this plastic pad that will sit on the top of your car. And it's going to go into the same place as the rubber tabs went through on the bottom of the leg. In this case, these little plastic cap pieces that you see attached to the side will be pushed into these holes. Obviously, the little ones here to the ends and that big T piece will go into the center and that will hold it in place. You want to make sure that you put this plastic piece in place first. Here's what that looks like assembled. Plastic tabs holding it in place and then I've added the rubber foot that you'll see in your kit which will protect the paint 
Now this one is ready for the legs on the rear of the car. If your kit includes an external brace on the leg, which some longer legs and often kits with this pad include, you want to put the brace to the outside of the leg, that same oval tab on the inside for your threading, and then it still attaches to the inside of the upper leg. Like this, and then your screws pass. Once again, from the outside to the inside, you're going to use another couple of those black cap screws. Here's what your leg should look like installed. The cap screw through to the rear bracket, leg on the inside of the upper leg on the bar, tension screw loosened off but just catching enough to keep your anti-tamper plate in place if you have one on your kit, which the aluminum bars should have on all kits, the steel bars may not. Leg is all the way out and ready to be fit onto the vehicle. The next thing to note is if you have a tab like this on the top of the bar, you may be looking, I don't know if you can see it in there, there's a little bump right, right there. You may be looking for a place on your vehicle where there will be a corresponding divot for that to slide into. If your bar has a hole in the bottom, sometimes that means, especially if the kit comes with an excluded, ex included screw, that you're looking for a threaded point that may be capped in your door sill, and that screw may pass through that hole to hold the leg in place. Once you have your bars assembled, the security cap with keyed lock goes on to, there's a slot you can see below the silver screw. I'm going to line that up with, there's the inside of your lock, and then it just slides on. And then you sometimes need a firm press, and then you turn the key, and that locks this in place, which denies people access to any of the hardware that would allow them to remove the rack from your vehicle. If you have a set of steel bars, this cap will not be included, but can be ordered separately. Now obviously you don't want to put the caps on before you put the bars on your roof because otherwise you will not be able to get at the hardware to tighten up the bars. And the positioning of the bars is indicated in the instructions. In this set, 23 centimeters in front of the rear of the front door and 49 centimeters behind the front door. That's the door gap between the front and the rear door is where you want your bars to be placed. And there's going to be a front and a rear bar and if you've built them according to the instructions you'll have both of those set up. Once you have the bars in place you want to tighten up that silver screw right there also indicated on the instructions. Hand tight. It says four newton meters but honestly just snug it up to the vehicle and get it into a place where it's, it's nice and firm and you can give the roof rack a good hard shake and nothing moves. Um, you don't have to crank down too hard. If you crank down too hard, because this is a threaded screw and it's multiplying the force of your hand, you do risk crushing the roof of your vehicle. So just firm, not all of the muscle you got. At this point, providing everything has gone well, you should have bars on the roof of your vehicle. If you have any questions, we answer all questions posed to us either via our email at info at modularracks.com or if you ask us a question on Amazon, we answer all fitting questions and assembly questions on Amazon as well for our roof racks or any of the brands that we carry. So you just look for modular racks and throw up a question on any of our postings and we'd be happy to get back to you. Cheers.